Islamophobia. Polls in various countries discovered that large proportions of the population have negative opinions of Islam and Muslims. This negative opinions are known as Islamophobia. What is Islamophobia? This is an intriguing question that we are going to answer in this article. What is Islamophobia? Islamophobia is defined in terms of behavior and attitude. Behavior is all types of actions that is easily observed by anyone confronted with it. While an attitude is not observed directly. You can say that the behavior is the effect of an attitude. So, we can say that hostility, exclusion, rejection, violence, and discrimination are negative behaviors which are practiced towards Islam and Muslims. In other words, Islamophobia is an unjustified fear and hatred of Islam. When did Islamophobia start? Many people think that Islamophobia began after the horrific events of 9-11, however, it actually began 14 centuries before that. It started when a man called Muhammad ibn Abi Diyala announced that he received revelation. The core of it is that belief in the unique oneness of God. Before that he was loved and respected by the pagan tribes of Arabia. Among the he was known as the truthful and the trustworthy. But when he said there is no God but Allah, they called him a madman, a lunatic, a sorcerer, a magician, a liar and a poet who had made up the Quran. He was astonished by their behavioral change. Allah told him in Quranic verses that it was actually nothing personal at all. And that the problem was actually with the message he was conveying to them. The problem that they didn't want to accept the verses. And indeed, they do not call you untruthful, but it is the verses of Allah that the wrongdoers reject. Quran 6-33 I know that their outer denial of you, O Messenger, upsets you. Know that inside they do not deny you, because they know your truthfulness and honesty. Instead, they are people who do wrong because of their rejection of Allah's words and they therefore dislike what you have brought and deny it on the outside. al 33 Why does Islamophobia appear? One other reason for Islamophobia is the negative representation of Islam from some of its followers. Unfortunately, Muslims today don't project a correct and civilized image of Islam. Another reason for Islamophobia is racism. Islam is still looked upon as the religion of the Arabs or the religion of dark-skinned people or the religion of people from the subcontinent of India. It is not viewed as a global religion. Islamophobia is also used in an attempt to justify past occupation of Islamic world and perhaps to justify the reoccupation of the Islamic world. In this article we will try to clarify some of many misconceptions used to attack Islam's picture in the Western countries. What is blasphemy? This is our first misconception we are going to talk about. If we question or think for ourselves do we become disbelievers? On the contrary, contemplation is required so that faith is not nearly inherited. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him contemplated the universe. Prophet Ibrahim contemplated the universe and commands us to contemplate the universe and attempt to crack the code or solve the riddle mentioned in the Quran. The riddle that is how deep creation begins. God Almighty addressed Prophet Muhammad in the Quran and told him, Say, O Muhammad, travel through the land and observe how he began creation. Quran 29-20 O Messenger, say to these deniers of the resurrection, travel through the land and think how Allah began the creation. Then Allah will restore people after their death to the second life for the resurrection and reckoning. Allah is powerful over everything, nothing is outside his ability, so he is able to resurrect people just as he created them in the first place. He punishes whom he wishes from his creation through his justice, and he has mercy on whom he wishes amongst his creation through his grace. You are not going to escape your Lord, nor can you flee from his punishment on earth or in the heavens. You do not have besides Allah any helper to take care of your affairs nor do you have any assistant to lift his punishment from you. Those who disbelieved in the verses of Allah and meeting him on the day of judgment, those have lost hope in my mercy, so they will never enter paradise due to their disbelief. And those will have a painful punishment that will await them in the afterlife. al 20-23 the important question is, how do I think? How do I ennoble my brain? There are four types of consciousness. 1. Sensuous consciousness. 
When I see something using the sense of sight and I become conscious of it, likewise, I hear, I taste, I smell anything and therefore I become aware of it, that is sensuous consciousness. 2. Imaginative Consciousness I conjure a picture in my mind based on my knowledge of past experiences and memories. For instance, I can imagine a bag that you describe to me based on my memories and experiences of similar bags. 3. Illusionary Consciousness It is empathy or feeling what others are feeling. As if I see you and I feel that you are upset, but you are happy, this is illusionary consciousness. 4. Mental Consciousness both humans and animals have those three types of consciousness in common, however, the fourth type of consciousness is possessed only by humans. It is mental consciousness, that is the ability to contemplate and use reason, this exclusive feature makes man unique. Whenever we enter debates with atheists, they reject mental proof, saying I want to see God, they ask, how can I believe if I don't see him? They demand sensuous consciousness an atheist once said that he want to concoct God in the lab. That means that he wants the creator to submit to his creation in the lab. If you want to think logically then you must believe in the mind abilities and understand that mental proof is stronger than sensuous proof. How can we control our senses? The mind is what sets the senses straight. The sense of sight makes you see water in the desert. But your mind is what tells you don't waste time. Don't believe your sense of sight. It's only a mirage in which the light reflects on the sand making you literally see water which doesn't actually exist. So, your senses might deceive you and lead you astray. But, your mind is the one that guides you through reasoning and understanding. Then we come to another matter, so long as you are going to think that you must believe with your mind, then you must know that the mind has its limits. It can even be conscious of some essential characteristics of the Creator. It can become conscious of the Creator's wisdom in certain matters, but it will fail to grasp others. I am an average person with an average mind. Can I attain Einstein's knowledge? Can I comprehend all that which Einstein can? No, I can't, let alone that of God Almighty, the All-Knowing, the All-Aware, certainly I will be able to understand some things, but others will be too complex for me to fathom. I may be able to grasp part of God's wisdom, but I will not be able to grasp all of it and that is the beauty of knowledge. The Unlimited Knowledge of God God's knowledge has no limits, and the more knowledge I acquire, the more aware I become of other sciences that the more need to go further in order to broaden my understanding, and the more aware I am that I can never master all sciences. God Almighty addressed Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, in the Quran and told him. Say, if the sea were ink for, writing, the words of my Lord, the sea would be exhausted before the words of my Lord were exhausted. Even if we brought the like of it as a supplement. Quran 18-109 Say, O Messenger, the words of my Lord are many. If the ocean were to be ink to write them with, the ocean water would finish before his words come to an end, and if I were to bring more oceans they would also finish. Say O Messenger, I am only a human like you, to whom it is revealed that your true God is one God who has no partner, namely Allah. Whoever fears meeting his Lord should do actions which conform with the sacred law, being sincere to his Lord in them, and should not associate any partner to his Lord in worship. al 109-110 So, your lack of understanding doesn't mean that the answer is necessarily wrong. It would be extremely arrogant to think that just because you can't grasp something that it means it is incorrect. Jihad and Terrorism Another great misconception about Islam is Jihad and Terrorism. Jihad in Arabic linguistic meaning comes from the root Jihad which means, someone doing great effort. So, its meaning in Arabic is striving and struggling. Jihad in Islam has two meanings. The first, a non-violent struggling within oneself for a life of virtue. That means, you struggle against your ego to be a better person. For example, spend a charity of $100 and try not to tell anyone not even your closest friend and see how hard is it. So, here jihad means a struggle to have sincerity. The second, fighting to establish justice, which is a supreme goal not only in Islamic teachings but in any civilization. If justice can't be established through peace, then you have to fight to establish justice and regain back your rights. But, if a Muslim went to a battlefield to fight to establish justice. Here are some limitations stated by Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. 
Never kill innocent people. Don't ever injure prisoners of war. Never kill animals. Do not destroy crops. Do not destroy infrastructures. Never mutilate bodies of enemies dead or alive. All prisoners should be given fair treatment. Women and children should be protected from harm. Always bury all dead with respect. If you go to Geneva Convention you will not find anything more than these limitations, maybe except showing them TV. Islam advocates moderation and abhors extremism, terrorism, fanaticism and oppression. Women's status in Islam Women's status in Islam is another great misconception about Islam. Despite of all the negative propaganda in the Western countries about women's status in Islam, most of those who converted to Islam are women. So, what do attract women to Islam? Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, said, Women are but sisters of men. Islam is very objective and it is not against any gender. Allah Almighty said in the Quran, and Allah presents an example of those who believed. The wife of Pharaoh, when she said, My Lord, build for me near you a house in paradise and save me from Pharaoh and his deeds and save me from the wrongdoing people. And, the example of, Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, so we blew into, her garment, through our angel. And she believed in the words of her Lord and his scriptures and was of the devoutly obedient. Quran 66-11-12 and Allah also mentions an example to those who have faith in him and his messengers. That their connections with the disbelievers will not harm them or affect them as long as they remain steadfast upon the truth, the example of the wife of Pharaoh when she said, O oh my Lord, build a house for me near you in paradise, and save me from the tyranny of Pharaoh, his might and his evil deeds. And save me also from the people who wrong themselves by following him in his transgression and oppression. And Allah also mentions an example for those who have faith in him and his messengers, in the condition of Mary the daughter of Imran who safeguarded her private parts from fornication. So Allah commanded Gabriel to blow into her due to which she fell pregnant through the power of Allah with Jesus the son of Mary, without a father. She also believed in the religions of Allah and the books revealed to his messengers, and she was obedient to Allah by fulfilling his commands and refraining from the things he did not allow. At Tarim 11-12 so, Mary and Pharaoh's wife are our examples as Muslim men and women. On the spiritual aspect, let's see if women are equal to men or not. Men and women have the same spiritual nature. Almighty said in the Quran. O mankind, fear your Lord, who created you from one soul and created from it its mate and dispersed from both of them many men and women. Quran 4 to 1. O people, be mindful of your Lord, for it is he who created you from a single soul, your father Adam, and from Adam he created his wife Eve, your mother. From the two of them, he spread many people, both male and female, all over the earth. Be mindful of Allah when requesting others by him, such as, I ask you, by Allah, to do such and such. Also, be mindful of breaking relations with your blood ties. Allah watches over you and nothing you do escapes him, rather, he takes it into account and repays you accordingly. Anissa, 1. So, this is how men and women are equal. We as Muslims don't believe that we are here on earth because of a mistake of Eve, a mistake of woman. No, this is something that we don't agree on. Actually in the Quran the blame falls on both of Adam and Eve. Both of them fall into the sin and ate from the forbidden tree. Allah Almighty said. And we said, O oh Adam, dwell, you and your wife, in paradise and eat there from in, ease and, abundance from wherever you will. But do not approach this tree, lest you be among the wrongdoers. Quran 2-35 Allah told Adam to live with his wife, Eve, in the garden, with nothing to ruin their bliss. They were instructed to consume the delightful food from anywhere in the garden, but also to avoid going near a particular tree which they were forbidden to eat from. If they ate from the prohibited tree, they would become wrongdoers for disobeying him. Al-Baqarah, 35 So, both men and women have the same duties and responsibilities. And both of them face consequences of their deeds in Islam. Why do Muslims women wear hijab? If you look for the pictures of great women in Christianity, you will find that all of them wear hijab. Hijab is a direct command from Allah to women. Muslim women are not wearing hijab all the time and with all people.
actually in the presence of their husbands and their close relatives they are wearing normally showing their hair and their arms. So, why do Muslim women wear like that? Men have been using women as tools of enjoyment. God wanted not to let women for public use, this is a liberation for Muslim women. Hijab put the control in women's hand which part in their bodies is permitted to be seen by others and not the opposite. Here we have discussed some misconceptions about Islam. If you need more clarification, kindly contact our chat team who can help you anytime.